Auto-generated corner tiles in Adobe CC can produce a variety of pattern variations by taking one pattern and applying it to different shape paths. I've created a pattern brush with just this one shape. To start, I'll show you how to create a pattern brush. I'll take an image from Photoshop and I'll just copy and paste it directly into Adobe Illustrator. Then use Live Trace to produce a scalable vector graphic. Yeah, that looks good. Paste this in, go to Image Trace, and I'll change my default to Silhouettes. Let's open up some more options or my threshold and snap my curves to lines. Now that I have the expanded version, I can make sure it's mirrored perfectly by creating a clipping mask and then just deleting the excess. I'll go to my merge option in my Pathfinder. Merge that down and to make sure I don't have any stray paths I'll go to select same fill color after selecting one of the objects and I can go back to select inverse and just hit delete. And that gets rid of any empty paths. I'll create a copy, mirror it, and get it ready for our pattern brush. I've created this boundary box as a way to map one instance of my pattern to each of my paths on each shape. So only one instance will be drawn from this corner to this corner of the triangle. I'll match that up and then while selected I'll go to my brushes palette go to new brush and create a new pattern brush the pattern brush options menu might look a little confusing but it's fairly simple these are your most important assets in your pattern brush options your tiles the outer corner tile the inner corner tile, and your side tile, which will be your original image. I'll change the outer and inner to centered, and we can name this centered. And I'll leave all of the other parameters alone. You can drag directly onto the new brush icon with one of your brushes selected to duplicate it. I'll create a between. A sliced. And an overlap. Now I have four different variations of how my pattern will be drawn along each one of these shapes. I'll apply my individual patterns. And you'll notice that in this column, they all seem to look exactly the same when you're looking at the circles. And then the circles over here look exactly the same, but different from our first column. That's because this particular column, the paths have been flipped vertically. That's a feature that you can toggle if you select a brush and choose flip across. 
it will actually flip how the pattern is drawn along the path. So instead of toggling to see the differences, I've simply just manually flipped all of this all of the shapes. So I'll ungroup them so we can take a look at the differences between each auto-generated corner tile preset. We'll take a look at the squares and for our centered you'll notice on the corner of our square our image is perfectly centered. If we expand this by going to Object Expand Appearance, you'll see how it will remove the square and leave us with just the image. There's no clipping mask used at all. So it simply distorts the original image that we used for our pattern brush preset and connects it along the path. So this is where our end was for our initial image, and it's simply just joining it along this path in between these two anchor points. For between, it takes the edge of the image that we used for our pattern brush and places that on the corner. So now our original pattern is centered along the path and not centered along our corner. Finally with our sliced we have something totally different going on and I'll demonstrate that over here by expanding our object and you'll notice there's clipping masks for each segment. Each clipping mask has our full pattern and simply takes it and slices it along an angle. So if I take one of the anchors from the clipping mask and drag it along, you can see how it's revealing more and more of our pattern. Slice can be used to create a variety of pattern variations that are new and interesting with your original image. I didn't draw these corners. It's just taking it and clipping it to create this new shape variation in the design. And last but not least, we have overlap. So with overlap, it simply takes your original and it places it pretty much on top of your corner with another image below it. I'll expand the appearance and show you what a corner looks like. So we have these two differing paths and you'll notice how it just overlaps them and clips a portion of our image to fit that corner but it's going vertically and horizontally with the initial image and doing no distortion. And then over here, we can take a look at the flipped patterns and see a variety of interesting shapes from our pattern flipped along the paths of our shapes. Now you can take these and scale them to any size you wish to produce even more variations. I'll take this and I'll scale it down. And you can see some interesting patterns emerge from the overlapping design of our initial pattern. You can also increase the size and for sliced it will insert an instance and distort it based off of the size of the path.
in between the two anchors. So as I continue to enlarge, it will continue to draw more instances of our initial pattern, creating more of a border lock effect. However, with between, between sort of averages and tries to produce less constrained instances of your pattern. So there can be a lot of interesting ways to experiment with patterns by increasing the size, decreasing the size, or by changing the auto-generated corner tile. Some other examples include the original symbol I used to produce a very interesting pattern. Oh. And a lot of these swirls would take many hours to produce by hand, but can be produced very quickly. Now you'll notice there's some issues with this triangle as the angle is very acute. So when drawing the initial pattern, it has to do a lot of crunching to fit within that angle. But as you increase the size, it slowly begins to add another instance and evens out that pattern. So again, with very, very few steps, you can produce dozens of variations, all with just basic geometric shapes. And all of these can still be used as borders as well. You can take them, scale them to whatever size you'd like, and there you have a border that can go along with your image. And feel free to experiment with many different images and symbols. I've used one of the symbols from my font Banish script. I'll showcase a few of those. So within the script, you can take any one of these symbols, perhaps crop them, flip and rotate, and produce really interesting calligraphic borders and designs. And you can use any of these for tiling, as well as for cutting and making into new symbols that you'll then take and insert as another pattern brush preset. So I can take this border, enlarge it, and maybe scale it to something like a page border. And now I can insert some of the text. And now we have a poem in a foreign language, and we can add a nice little design to go with it. Or maybe it's a spell book. But all of these design elements work together. So definitely take the template that will be provided in the link below and use that to apply a variety of your different patterns and images to these multiple shapes and generate many different variations in just a few seconds.